I don't know what more we, we can say about this genius that is Ronaldo. Now, that, by the way, was late in the game. The pressure mounting, 3-2 down, and that to get them back in the game. And we spoke about it at the time. We just looked at the focus he had in those eyes of his. He rolled up those, those, those shorts, and he said to himself, this is going in the back of the net. And I saw an interview with Ronaldo where he actually says, I speak to the ball. I know exactly where I want to put that ball, and it's going to go where I put it. And boy, did he put it where he, where he wanted to put it. And I looked at that wall, at what, I think it was Sergio Busquets in the, at the end of the wall, and I was amazed at how high he jumped. But that ball still went up, over, and back down into the net. Fantastic performance by Ronaldo. Yeah, what a performance from it. And of course, he always says in interviews that it's not a competition between him and Messi, although the rest of the world likes to think that is. Although he did an interesting uh, celebration after his goals during that Spain match. I don't know if you noticed it, but that could be reference to uh, GOAT, you know, greatest of all time. Is that a dig at Lionel Messi? Where are you on that debate, Andre? I don't think he has to have a dig at Lionel Messi because these are two quality players in their own right. And it's nice to see the banter between them, uh, uh, the fans hyping up these two because they are the best in world football, there's no doubt about that. The fact that they share Ballon d'Or awards prove that they are the best in the world. And Ronaldo, he can do what he wants. He can, he can have a go to whoever he wants because he is up there and he's probably the, the best in the world when he's, fight, when, when he's sort of fighting for it with, with Lionel Messi. I think when you, when you look at that, it's good for the game. It's just that banter between the players. It's absolutely good for the game. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question on behalf of Morocco. As a keeper, how would you arrange your defence to prevent Cristiano Ronaldo dominating a match? Well, you don't. You just say, have a go, and you, and, and you hope that Ronaldo maybe puts it over the crossbar or you get a hand and you save it. There's nothing much you can practice towards um, defending Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo on set plays, free kicks, that sort of thing. You've just got to go into it hoping that they, he doesn't get opportunities that he might score past you. Um, I think that's, that's not going to be the case though because I think um, he's now in such con with confident mode, Cristiano Ronaldo, it's going to be such an uphill battle against that Portugal side. Well, it has been a World Cup of surprises with uh, only with the five of the top six FIFA-ranked teams not being able to win their openers. Only Belgium were able to do that. Result, one of those that drew their openers. And now they have a bit of a moment that might make any Brazil fan feel a bit faint and get your heart racing because Neymar was in training, which is great news. Of course, after his foot injury, everybody wanted to see him back and he also scored goals in their warm-up matches. So when Brazil were training, OK, they've got about three days to go before they are in action again. And all eyes were on Neymar. Of course it would be. He's already scored 55 goals for Brazil. He is such a leader for them. And he is one that would make or break a team. He could change a game in an instant though during training he limped off and it yeah. seems that he has an ankle problem how massive would this be if Brazil do not have Neymar for the next match massive he's also the most fouled player in the World Cup as well so you can imagine how big he is for this particular team now the the, the story coming out of the camp Crystal is that he, he injured his foot while just having a very laid-back training session he was busy taking free kicks he was practicing his his technique and he he limped off after he sort of winced um, with an ankle that he had previously broken um, in his career. And so it's the same ankle, and he must have felt something twitch just enough for him to limp off and, and, and have it checked out. Hopefully it's not too serious. Like you say, they've got a bit, little bit of, bit of time, um, and so they can make that assessment. Hopefully it's a good one. Um, that he can, we'll see him in action for the next game. Thankfully, they have a few days for that. You mentioned that he's one of the most fouled players. Just in that match against Switzerland, he was targeted 10 times. My word, that's a lot. It is a lot because it just shows you the importance that he has to, for his team. And so a lot of the focus is on Neymar, which is not a bad thing because it releases the focus of his teammates. And I think when, 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 when you look at, at what he's worth to the team, that for me is massive. So... If he were not to take part in the next game, of course it would be a massive blow for Brazil.
Okay, so that's just uh, breaking news for you. We had to let you know about Neymar and, of course, Brazil, who before the tournament and during the tournament will remain one of the favourites to take the title. They, of course, have won it the most times out of all nations. Let's go back to talk about Ronaldo and focus in on that match tonight, which you have to be watching throughout today. There is World Cup action, but do look out for Portugal up against Morocco. Portugal's opening match against Spain had it all. Six goals, shared points and a hat-trick from the current FIFA World Footballer of the Year. For the neutral, it was a classic. Obviously, the first game was great for all the spectators and the supporters. But the most important thing in the game tomorrow is that we show a very serious side with a great team spirit. We're preparing to win the game tomorrow. I hope that we will be very focused in order to achieve a positive result. There was a rare occurrence in this session. Cristiano Ronaldo actually failed to do what he'd intended to do with a football. After the shock subsided, there was laughter. Ronaldo's teammates know just how important his contribution to the first game was and want to lift their levels to his for the next game against Morocco. There are always things to improve. There's no such thing as a perfect match. I think there are things to improve from the Spain game, and we'll be looking to do that and put that into the game tomorrow. At 33, Ronaldo is the oldest man to score a hat-trick at the FIFA World Cup finals. In the form he's in, it wouldn't be a surprise if he broke his own record just days after setting it. So that proves that Ronaldo is human during training, superhuman though when they are in action. Portugal and Spain played out to that three-all draw, that was their opener and as a result they are second and third respectively. Morocco though are under pressure and they will be hoping for a repeat of history. Of course the Atlas Lions have won twice at a World Cup, one of those times was against Portugal, but that was back in 1986. Iran top that group. What will happen in Group B? Well, all of it unfolds, of course, today, and you'll be able to see both Portugal and Morocco in action, as well as Spain up against Iran. Now, talking about Morocco, I have to ask Andre just a quick question about how, defensively how they will be uh, just arranging themselves for this particular match. What will Herb Renard go for? Will he go for four at the back? Well, he, Should he? He, he look. They've got to get themselves on the points board, though, and 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 you know it's not going to be easy from that perspective. First and foremost, what Morocco have got to do is not give away free kicks, fouls, set plays outside of their area because it's very dangerous to contend with. I felt for them in that opening game was late on with that Iran goal, um, and so there was lots of disappointment. I just wonder, from a Moroccan perspective, after that disappointment from that first game, how do they? What is the mindset saying going into this all-important second clash? It's a more difficult one. It's one that's going to test them to the limit, um, and so I think. Are they ready to handle it? I just feel from an African perspective, the concentration levels, we've documented that in the, in the World Cup so far, they'll be tested. I don't know if they've got it in the locker to get out of this next game. Match two of a World Cup, how does a team approach it? Would you go for an offensive strategy? It does depend on your opening result. Um, and so that will lead you into how you approach your second game. Um, for Morocco, it has to be a little bit more attacking because they've now got to come back from that opening, um, opening result that wasn't the best for them. And so I think that they've got to be careful. They've got to manage the game properly. They've got to, they've got to look at critical moments in the game and how they focus around those. And so if they get that right for me, I think they've got half a chance. Spain-Iran is the other match from that group that you'll be able to see later on your World of Champions as well as Uruguay. They will be in action looking to reach the round of 16 for the third straight edition of the World Cup. All that and more is what we touch on right here on World Cup Blitz after this break.